Hi, tea timers. So um, today I'm still chugging the chai tea. It's got the little bit of cream, a little bit of honey, and um, yeah, it's still tasty. <laughs> I've really been enjoying my chai chai tea binge here. I don't know how much longer it's gonna last, but I'm enjoying it. Um, let's see. Let me answer some questions here. All righty. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Sad Bob by Wings of Destiny. Do you have a distributor for your books in Europe? I'd get them all in a flash, but the customs bills uh, kill the customs kill my economy getting them from U.S. or Canada. Yes, I do. Thank you for asking. Um, now I don't know how to. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing because they are my publisher in, in Europe, but um, I don't know how to pronounce their name. It's um, I think it's called P Piatkus. Um, and I know it's some kind of fancy word that everybody should know how to pronounce, but I don't. It's spelled P-I-A-T-K-U-S. And they're an uh, imprint of Little and Brown, and they're really lovely over there. We've, we've had meals, and they're just, they're just really lovely. And they, they um, handle distribution for, let's see, for the UK, for uh, the EU, for Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and India, and then also a publisher in Estonia just purchased the rights to my Solace Island series as well. So um, you should be able to access them in, in all of those places, and, um, and, and you can either probably online, or I don't know if they're in the bookstores, or order them, or whatever, but they, I do have a publisher in Europe. Um, let's see. Um, oh, a Starry Cat wanted to know if, um, is there something I've always, she liked the recipe and she wanted to know if there's something I've always wanted to try and haven't yet and um, cooking. And um, yes, well, I did try when we, I, duck. It's always supposed to be like, oh, duck seems. And I think the reason I've been scared off on it is because we tried it when we were little because we had chickens and ducks and we had to kind of raise our own food. But I always felt, um, felt like the ducks were pretty dumb. Like they would just quack, quack, quack and just didn't didn't like lay eggs in the proper nest. You'd always find eggs just anywhere, like on a hillside or on a, you know, like they just weren't weren't super, super um, bright. So that's what I told myself anyway, when we had to kill one and pluck it. And then we were gonna cook it, but it was very, very fatty because we didn't know how to cook duck. And I think that so then in my mind, because I was a kid then when we tried to cook it, it's always been in my mind like, oh, that's really a difficult thing to cook. But I've cooked lots and lots of other things. I've just never cooked that because still my child mind is like, oh, really difficult. So, so hard to do. So um, I, probably, I probably will do that at some point. And have I watched the Bridgertons on Netflix? I haven't, but everybody's saying that I should. Um, um, they're like, oh, it's so good. And my friend Diana just wrote to me and she said, oh, you'd love it, it's so much fun. I I've read the books. All, um, the, the Bridgertons is based on Julia Quinn's series, The Bridgertons, and I've read all of those. And I really enjoyed them. And I think maybe that's where a little bit of my reluctance comes in is because when you read books and you like them, then you imagine everybody a certain way. And so when I've seen the ads for it, I'm like, oh, but that's not, but it was a long time ago I read them. So I'm sure that it's really good and I'm sure I'll get around to it at some point. I also wanna watch The Queen's Gambit because um, I've heard that that's really good as well. I, um, what I have been watching <laughs> lately which i don't it just feels like such a safe fun thing to do is the reruns of mary tyler moore oh my gosh it like reminds me of happy times when i used to be in um when i first came to la and jen and i shared that studio apartment and she would go off to her rehearsal and that was before i had rehearsals and i would watch and they had this the thing where you could watch all the old shows that were um, in fashion when I was a kid and a teenager, but we didn't have TV, so I never got to see them. So I watched them and I watched, you know, Mork and Mindy and Happy Days and um, Mary Tyler Moore and Bewitched. And I, I just loved it. So I've been rewatching, I just started rewatching her seasons um, and I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. And you know what else? I just watched a show where they're talking about how old they are and, and Lou, was in his 40s. I think they said 46. And Dawn and I went like, huh? Because 
when we watched it, we were young and Lou seems so old. And now I'm like, holy smokes, I'm like 15, 16 years older than Lou. <laughs> And still, when I see the show, somehow he's this big gruff curmudgeon, you know, and you, you just think of it like, oh, then there's Mary. And you just, Mary was older than me. And I looked up to her. I remember Jen and I, when we took our acting class, it was at the Mary Tyler Moore Studios. She had her own studios then in Burbank. And I was like, oh, we we're doing the screen actors class. I'm like, I'm on the same studio that Mary Tyler Moore owns, and it just felt really special. So, um, yeah, so I don't know. I got to Mary Tyler Moore from the Bridgertons. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Yeah, we still have time. Matthew Lucas, what is the one thing about fame in your time of extreme fame did you find the most amazing, and what was the one thing you found the most not amazing? Oh. Huh. Well, I'd say the most not amazing is it was scary to be famous, right? I remember the first time it was when um, Psycho 2 came out and it was around three days after it came out. And I just went to the market like I normally do and um, was buying my groceries and, and the guy was bagging him and he recognized me for the movie. And he's like, oh my God, you look so different in person. Wow, yeah, I saw the movie and you know, um, starts discussing it and I was I was shocked because I thought I play my characters that 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 that's my characters I didn't ever think when I went to acting that people would recognize me because I thought I'd dive so deeply into their characters that 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 they wouldn't know that th that was me but I had the same face so I went home and I was I was really shaken by it um and I, I didn't leave the house for three days. And I think the thing is, is because when I was little, how I could stay safe was by making myself invisible. So, you know, if our stepdad was in a, uh, you know, gonna beat somebody mood, <laughs> I could hide, like I was a really good hider. You know, I could, I, I, I had all these really good hiding places and I could, you know, if you just run outside really fast and you climb up the apple tree and you lie really small and against one of the branches, he doesn't think to look up, you know, or, or, or there, I had a really good one because this was, you know, we just had a refrigerator there, but there was a little bit of space and I was really skinny. And so I could, when he was comes tearing out of the bedroom, I could run from the, from the living room and get in behind the refrigerator and it, you have to go in sideways and you can't go in straight you have to turn your head to the side because there's not room for your head straight forward and so I just go there and you know other people um, would get caught and they get the spanking or um, sometimes under the kitchen sink because it has this little um, this little um, you know where the pipe goes but I could get in on this side and get my legs over this side and pull the door shut and he wouldn't find me so for me, safety was always being able to, oh, and once. So then once Becky's like, how did, because Becky got the spanking that time. She goes, how did you, where did you go? You were right next to me and then you were just gone. And I said, ah, the refrigerator. I hid behind the refrigerator because if I go sideways, I told her. And then the next time, you know, John comes roaring out of the bedroom, rah, you stupid kids. Um, I go running to my spot and I go, and then there's Becky behind the fridge with her. <laughs> with her head sideways, smiles at me like, I'm not here first. I was like so mad. I should have told her my hiding space. So then that, that time I ran outside um, and up in a tree. Um, so he still didn't get me. Um, let's see, but what was I? Oh, oh, so <laughs> I lost my track. So the question was fame. So all of a sudden I wasn't able to disappear. Like in life I could too. There was like just a way that I could if I was out or getting attention is I could just tuck into myself and people wouldn't notice me. And I could just disappear in the crowd or disappear like in my big baggy clothes and people wouldn't look at me. But once you're famous, people people look at you and it doesn't matter what, what you're wearing or how much you try to tuck into yourself. And, and so I felt um, scared. I felt scared because I didn't feel safe because um, people were always looking at me and I couldn't have so if you went to dinner, you come in and when you're really, really famous, people don't mean to, they're just, they're interested. Like, goodness, I know I'm interested when I see somebody that, that I really admire, right? And so, um, you know, but just has turned. So you, you just have this feeling of always being watched. And I remember, like I remember when I had, after um, Big Chill was really, really, really popular. And that's, so it started with the first one, Psycho 2, but then after that I, done the big chill and um, 
then it was I was really really famous. So I remember um, being morning sickness with my daughter and in in a department store and gonna have to throw up and I'm running to the bathroom for the store and and somebody recognized me and then somebody else did and they were chasing me and I remember um, being in the bathroom it, getting into the bathroom just in time and throwing up in the bathroom and um, and um, people being like make Tilly make Tilly and I remember um, <laughs> I remember what let me just show you actually I have a picture this is my favorite picture from the two Jakes. Uh, the ph photographer on set just grabbed a, a photo of me. I was walking from the trailer. I'll show you. Can you see it? I was walking from my honey wagon because they give you like these trailers that, can you see it all? Okay. I was walking from my trailer. Um, they give you these honey wagons that you get to be in and I had my children with me um, and I would um, go from, but Emily was big enough that she could come on the set because David was smaller. So, um, so I, he, I had to leave him in the trailer with the babysitter, but Emily would be very quiet. So I was going to the set, they called me and we were doing the courtroom scene. And um, as you can see, so I'm wearing the outfit I wore in the courtroom scene, but there's a little bit of wrinkles and they were they steam, would steam me um, when I got on the set because I had little kids hopping on and off my lap, my daughter and my son. And there's little Emily with her, those were her favorite sandals and this was her favorite, her favorite dress. And she just wore that dress until it was just threadbare. She loved that dress so much. And um, anyway, so I was, this was the outfit I was wearing. And, um, and Jack was insistent that, you know, because we're doing a period piece that you wear all the period stuff too underneath. So um, I was, um, we were in the thing and there was all the main principal actors in this courtroom scene. So it was, it was a, a challenge to, um, to light everybody and to shoot everybody. So they were keeping us all kind of in this area and um, in the courtroom uh, and um, who was the, uh, um, it was a very famous uh, cinematographer doing it, but the name's flown out of my head like things do so often. So, um, so I was there and I had to go to the restroom and you know, you hold off as much as you can because you've got the old fashioned uh, underwear from that time period that the girdles and the this and the that, and it's, it's a lot to get out of. So I was holding off as long as I could, but I really had to go. And so I said, I, um, I told the AD and they said, okay, wait, I'll let you know when you have a shot. And then, there was a, a, a break and he said, okay, but you got to go quick because um, it's, it's only a short break. So I said, okay. So I'm running, we're in this old um, courthouse and there's these marble kind of floors or white floors with little, I think they had little black imprints in them. And I'm running, I'm running as fast as I can to get to the bathroom because it takes a while to get out of everything. But I hear footsteps, but I don't really, I register a little bit, but I hear footsteps and I get in the bathroom and I, I shut the door and I get out of the girl and I get down and I put the toilet paper down on my seat and I sit down and just as I'm about to go, the door, the door of the bathroom swings open and somebody knocks on the stall and they're like, Miss Tilly, Miss Tilly, Miss Tilly, is that you? And I'm like, because I really have to go, but I don't want to go if somebody knows it's me and I'm going to have to go. And then bang, 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 Miss Tilly, Miss Tilly. And I'm like, oh no, what do I do? And then they, and then they took, uh, it was a, a stall, it was like had this wood door, so it's boom, boom, boom. And the door went right down to like around this from the thing. And all of a sudden, under the thing comes a manila envelope with photos, eight by 10 photos of me and a, and a, a little uh, Sharpie to sign with. And I just am looking at it like, what the hell do I do? And I've got to get out fast and I really have to go to the bathroom and I'm not going to do it while somebody's standing right outside the door. And they said, bang, 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 Miss Tilly? And I didn't say anything. Go, you, you are Miss Tilly, aren't you? And I don't know. And then all of a sudden I got really grouchy because I thought, and I, I kind of channeled my inner mother, you know, that voice you use with your kids when they're trying to be bad. And I said, not when I'm on the toilet, I'm not. <laughs> and I said, out, out, scoot the thing out. And they're like, whoo, <laughs> I, I imagine. They're on the other side of the door and they go outside, out, outside the door and, um, and I'm, I'm like, oh, oh. and then finally I got to the bathroom. And there's nothing better when you really, really, like you think you're going to burst when you actually finally can. I'm telling you, it's even better than ice cream or candy. But anyway, so you don't, more than you want to know, then I got finished up, flushed, washed my hands. But I still was like, 
okay, because I knew they were waiting outside. Now there were more of them, but uh, you know, at least they were outside. And I didn't know which one was the one who came charging in and was banging on the thing and slid, sent a whole bunch of photos. So I went out and I signed everybody's photos. And But it was like kind of like, ah, oh, come on, come on. Like I was going to the bathroom, but I don't didn't know which. So I was, try, was polite to everybody, even though I was, I was feeling a little grumpy about that. And another time I remember I was, um, when I was giving birth to Emily and it was right after, and I was really, really shy. You know, I was really shy. Um, and, uh, you know, I still wore my flannel pajamas. Well, I still do, <laughs> you know, and everybody, like, I don't know, I'm pretty much every intern or, or a person who was like working on, on that floor came in to take a look to see how I was progressing. It was really, I was really, really embarrassed and I'm in transition. I remember I was in transition. I'm like, oh, you know, it's like the worst kind of pain. And then another nurse came in and she's like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, Meg Tilly. And she had a huge crush on Bill Hurt and she wanted to know what it was like to work with Bill Hurt. And, and I was in transition giving labor. And I guess those are the things that are challenging when you're um when you're uh when you're really really super famous but um luckily i'm not anymore and i think that's those were one of the reasons you know people would sometimes try to get you and they might knock aside uh your a loved one or you know uh, so so sometimes that can be be challenging especially when i have my children and i was trying to keep my children safe and um um but there's many many blessings to to um to being famous as well, to having that job that I did. I got to work, you know, really intensely for three to six months on a film. And then I got to be a stay at home mom for the rest of the time and, and, and was paid well. And, and that would last me for the rest of the year. Sometimes if I was careful, like a year and a half, and that was such a blessing. So, and I got to discover new things inside myself and new characters and travel to wonderful places. So, that was um, wonderful as well. And you know what? I have a story about something wonderful, one of the wonderful benefits, but I'll tell it another time because I was going to go um, shorter. <laughs> and uh, I seem to have gone long again. So um, lots of love to you guys, and I'll see you in the next uh, tea time. Okay, take care. Be safe. All right.